Okay, this is now the Tower of Process Part 10, the Celtic Cross, third card, introduction. Okay, so this is going to be a bit obviously about the third card, the foundation card in a Celtic Cross, but I want to give you some general, uh, one general idea that I think will make figuring out what cards mean an awful lot easier and so we have there's two hemispheres in the brain the right side of the brain the right hemisphere is creative and comes up with ideas and makes connections the left hemisphere of the brain is logical and analytical and rational we can say so Often you have an idea, you have a thought about something you might want to do or a good idea, and then you immediately think, well, is it good or is it bad? How is it going to work? It's not likely to happen. Every other people have tried it and they didn't work for them. Why should it work for me? And what tends to happen is, what happens too often, I think, is you come up with an idea and you immediately begin to critique it. And often, often enough, you talk yourself out of what would have been a good idea if you had left it for a bit and thought about it. And a while ago, I did made a video or two videos on how to write an essay. And part the first part of writing an essay is you've done all your research, you draw a line out, you put it all away, and you start with what's in your head, what you remember, what comes to mind. And you take five minutes and you write down what you might talk about, what you might write about. And then you leave it for a day and then you go back to it the next day and then you look at each item on the list and figure out, do I want to use this? Is it good? Is it bad? Does it help the argument? Do I need to prove it? Is it obvious? And questions like that. And what you're doing is you've got the right side of the brain is a creative part and the left side of the brain is a critical part and you keep the two functions separate and then you get a better result. But if you try to do them both at the same time, you get in your own way and you block what would have been a good idea or what could have been a good idea. So what I did was, I want to illustrate that this point with the King of Swords, right? So what I'm going to suggest you do, forget about um, a card a day, unless you, you think today about yesterday's card. That's, that's different. So I'm thinking, okay, um, Here's the King of Swords. You, you give yourself two minutes maximum to come up with ideas about what this card might mean. And you don't, you, you don't censor yourself. You, 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 you just write down anything that comes to mind. Because tomorrow or later, that's when you critique it and figure out if it was actually a good idea or not. You don't do it at the same time. And so give yourself two minutes and then you've done a lot of good work for the day and you leave it for the time being. So I looked at this King of Swords and I came up with three words. It took me a minute. Well, I can't remember how long it took. It didn't take long. And I came up with harsh, stupid and decisive are the three words. So I write them in a piece of paper and I don't think harsh, well, maybe it's not so harsh. I write down harsh because that's what I thought. You trust yourself. And the ideas that come to mind are the right ideas for you at that time. And you're going to figure them out later, but not at the moment you think of them. And this works for anything, for any problem you've got or problem you want to solve. Take five minutes and, and come up with what you might do or say. And then tomorrow you can look and figure out what you're actually going to do or say. So I've got harsh, stupid and dis decisive so I look at it tomorrow and I look the king of swords is the king of swords actually harsh what do I mean by harsh and this is where the the analytical part of you starts to operate and you think what do I mean by harsh he's holding a sword in his hand so maybe he's dangerous and so when when you're coming up with your ideas yesterday you write down one or two words. You don't write down a paragraph or a sentence. That's way too much. You just want the basic idea of the word or two that will sum up or remind you of what it was you were thinking at the time. 
so harsh. What, what's, what's harsh anyway? Because he's got a sword in his hand, maybe he's dangerous, or maybe he says something the way other people would say it would be okay, but the way he says it, it's harsh. So there's something about the way he speaks, maybe, that is different. Let's say, and at this point, we're being analytical, so we're comparing maybe, you think about the King of Cups. So is the King of Cups harsh? Maybe he's rough in his criti criticisms of what he says. Is the King of Batons harsh? Somehow, harshness and batons don't go together. Now, I, this, this could change next week, but at the moment, I'm making notes about harshness for what it means to me at this time. And then the King of Pentacles, is he harsh? Not the way the King, maybe he's harsh because he withholds money, but he's not harsh because the King of Swords is active and he's got a sword in his hand. So he could maybe hurt you directly through his action, whereas the King of Pentacles can hurt you through withholding money, let's say. And maybe we figure out, or I figure out, that the King of Swords upside down, that's harsh. Okay, then I've done enough with harshness. So I write down stupid next. So is the King of Swords stupid? We can all, we all do stupid things once, now and again, right? So, stupid. In in what in what way is the King of Swords stupid? Maybe he acts, takes action with the sword before he has all the information. So maybe he's stupid when he gets ahead of himself, or when he rushes. What about the King of Cups? The King of Cups can also be stupid. In what way? Maybe when he gets over emotional. Or when he's faced with somebody who is really emotional, that's when you he, you expect him to be stupid or to say something or do something that's really quite stupid. King of Pentacles is stupid how? Maybe he overspends or spends money he doesn't have or doesn't recognise a bargain when it hits him in the face. And the King of Batons is, is stupid. Maybe when he rushes or when he... Um, you, you can be too energetic you can be sort of frazzled and all over the place and maybe that's the king of Spartans' problem in, when it comes to being stupid or doing, doing stupid things and the third, card, the third word I wrote down was dis, decisive and you can see the king of swords can be decisive you know he's got the sword in his hand when the time is right he takes action he cuts he removes what's no longer useful um, he makes space for new growth, whatever you, however you want to think about it. So the King of Swords can be decisive. So that, that's my point for the King of Swords. So if we look at, um, and so I'm, I'm going to talk in the next video about the foundation card, but I wanted to give you an idea of how you can put things together. So let's say the first three cards in a Celtic cross are, first card is the tower, the, the opposing force is the two of swords, and the, th the foundation card is the king of swords. Because the foundation in some way tells you about the past. So let's say the tower as the first card is, indicates that things are falling apart. Right, they've been destroyed, they've been upset, they've been confused. That it was orderly, but now is there's disorder to some extent. And that's what you're dealing with. The opposing forces of two of swords can indicate that you don't know what to do. You've got two swords. Do you do this? Do you do that? I can't make up my mind. Right, so you've got chaos of some sort or disruption of some sort. And you also don't know what to do about it. If you've got the King of Swords in the foundation, then it's not such a problem because in the past, the King of Swords, you knew how to be decisive. You have experience of making a decisive, a decisive decision, making a, a, or being decisive and looking at a situation and assessing it and taking the correct action so 
the chaos shown by the tower and the indecision shown by the two of swords isn't as bad as it would have been if the king of swords had been upside down because if the king of swords is upside down in the foundation then this indecisiveness is, is looks like an ongoing problem in the past you had chances to act in this in a decisive way and to make a decision and have things work out the way you want but you didn't because the king of swords is upside down so it can be that this whole spread that we're doing in the Celtic cross it's illustrating an ongoing problem that the person has it could be a, a, a need to develop a decisive attitude and not be wishy-washy so when the king of swords is upright then that's not so much of a it may be a problem at the moment that you can't decide what to do but it's not an ongoing problem it's not a repeating problem because you do know how to actually make the decision and it gives you a, an understanding of what the person's going through which means that when you see the other cards in the spread you understand them maybe more correctly because you're not um, getting carried away with the fact that the person that a decision has to be made and people don't know quite what to do about the situation okay that's it for the moment so I'll stop in a few seconds and next time will be the third card in a Celtic cross but I'll look at what what we can get from it and ideally give you a few more examples so thank you for watching goodbye have a nice day